Hey, how's everyone doing? Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to complete the Ancient Evil Easter Egg solo and co-op. This is gonna be a pretty long video, so let's just skip the formalities and get into it. Before we jump in game, we need to start by building a class setup. As per usual, let's bring in the Strife as our starting weapon. For equipment, bring in the Wraith Fires as these are really good for clearing a crowd, but we will end up getting the Pegasus Strikes pretty early on. For your Specialist weapon, I recommend taking in the Chakrams for the Tier 3 ability they have. Have, which creates a whirlwind effect doing tons of damage and more importantly the specialist weapon is like the number one weapon used in the boss fight so it's going to be pretty good for that in general for perks i brought in dying wish victorious tortoise stamina up and winner's whale in the modifier slot stamina up is essential for this map because it's literally just a bunch of running around for this easter egg but having winner's whale in the modifier slot is good if you're shit at zombies and it'll give you a fourth hit activation as well as continuing to blast ice around you when activated, slowing down the surrounding zombies. Elixirs is a different story. If you only have the classic elixirs, that's fine. Any one of them will work. But me personally, to make this go by faster, I brought in Shopping Free, Perkaholic, Cash Back, and License Contractor. Those last two specifically because the boss fight is a little weird and I'll explain more when we get there, but they'll also just help in general if you find yourself running out of ammo or need a new shield. Finally, a talisman is not required at all, but I brought in the supercharged crystal for an automatic tier 3 specialist weapon. Step 1 is going to have you interact with the sentinel artifact which is located inside the amphitheater. The catch with this is, after interacting with it, you'll be locked inside forcing you to complete a small lockdown. It's not hard, but it will start by spawning in 3 skeletons that will die instantly with headshots. But you that you went in because when he and when you couldn't, but you know, but they can break apart and rebuild themselves up to three times with body shots. When those three skeletons are dead, zombies will begin to spawn until Pegasus shows up and starts killing them for you. When your screen flashes white, pick up the max ammo and you're done with interacting with the Sentinel artifact. Before moving any further with this Easter egg, we can focus on getting two things. Getting the Golden Bridle, which allows you to go to Pack-a-Punch, and the Shield. We'll start off with the Golden Bridle because grabbing that will allow you to pick up one of the pieces to the Shield. It can be found at the intersection of Treasuries on this pedestal, or it can be found in the Stoa of Athenians area of the map on this pedestal. When you pick it up, two things are going to happen. One, a Giganese will spawn, but save him for a second, we will come back to him shortly. The second thing that happens is Pegasus will now be waiting for you to ride him by the Zeus perk statue. Don't ride Pegasus yet though, because you will be stuck at Pack-a-Punch for a bit. Now going back to the Giganese, go ahead and kill him by shooting the red scratches on his chest, and he'll drop the first piece to the shield, which is literally the shield. The other two pieces to the shield have three different possible spawn locations. The second piece can be found in the upper road on this corner of the bridge, on the opposite side sitting on this rock, or just behind that down the slope on this rock. The third and final piece can be found in the Stoa of Athenians, leaning on this broken railing just up the stairs, leaning on this wall of the flower bed at the intersection of treasuries, or just down the path leaning up against this statue. When you have all three of the parts to the shield, bring them to this workbench in the market and build it. Now we can actually move on to opening Pack-a-Punch, go over to where Pegasus is next to the Zeus perk, and interact with the circle. A pretty dope cutscene will play of him taking you to the underworld, and when you get there, there will be two cages containing eagles. The first one is in the Python Pass, and for this one it will be hanging. Just shoot the chain until it breaks and falls to the ground. The second one will already be on the ground, and it'll be in the Cliff Ruins. Pull out your specialist weapon in front of one of them and break the door open to release the eagle, then run as fast as you can to the other cage and break that door open. At this point, a Giganese will spawn and you can either kill him now or you can take him to the center of the world and just kill him there when the lockdown starts. Because either way, as soon as you go to the center of the world, a lockdown is going to start and it's pretty much time-based but a bunch of skeletons will spawn, so I recommend just killing whatever spawns. And once the lockdown does end, pack a punch will be now open for business and teleporters will spawn taking you back to the main map but there is one more thing we can do here before leaving. Pegasus strikes are basically overpowered monkey bombs and I have really good news for you. They 
can be crafted in the underworld. There are three parts with all three having three different possible spawn locations. The staff can be found in the River of Sorrow at the very top on this rock, just down the path to the right next to this fire, or in the River of Sorrow again near this zombie spawn on the rock. The anvil can be found at the entrance of the forge on this rock, just behind you in front of this broken pillar, or in the cliff ruins in front of the sniper wall by on this rock. The hammer can be found in the python pass to the left of the shrine of Caron leaning on this giant bone. To the left of that leaning on this wall, it'll be down the left side path. The final location can be found to the left of the titan wall by on the back side of this rock where the paths meet. And when you have all three of the parts, take them to this workbench in the forge to build it. So we've gotten the pack-a-punch and most of the buildables out of the way. Now we can focus on building and upgrading the four hands of the gods, Oranos, Gaia, Caron, and Hamera. These four wonder weapons have to be built and upgraded to complete this Easter egg. All of them except for Gaia. That one needs to be built, but not upgraded. Lucky for you, I'm not gatekeeping information, and I'm going to show you that one anyway, just in case you still want to use it. To start on this, for all of the hands, you need to find a dormant hand. There's going to be 20 different spawn locations, but you only need to find four. And up on screen, as I go through the locations, you'll see a quote. This quote will be told to you by the Oracle in spawn. And and based on what she says, that's going to be your hint as to where to find the dormant hand. Seek the primordial weapon the blossoms. A quick tip too is, even in solo, you can only have one dormant hand at a time, so you'll probably need to replay this section of the video over and over again, because when you get your hand of one of the gods and then go back to the oracle, that's when you'll get your second quote. So again, one more time for you, you can only have one dormant hand at a time, and in order to receive your next quote hint from the oracle, you need to finish at least one of the fully built hands. So here are all of the locations now. Shieldbearer's Fountain is at the Stoa of Athenians in the vase on this fountain. Shrine of Wind and Sky is at the center of the world to the left of the Oranos Shrine. General's Column is at the Spartan Monument in this vase. Purple Blossoms is at the intersection of treasuries at the bottom of these stairs. Fallen Statesman is at the Spartan Monument near this fallen statue on the border of the map. Where the arrow splits the road is at the intersection of treasuries near the giant arrow. Where Sorrow flows beneath is at the very top of the River of Sorrows near this railing. Chaos of Treasuries is in the intersection of treasuries on the giant red crystal. On the Broken Bridge is in the cliff ruins on this broken bridge in the vase. Top of the center of the world is directly behind Pack-a-Punch in front of the portal on the ground. Chaos of Venom is found in the Python Pass next to this trap on the red crystal. Workbench of Hephaestus Hephaestus, I don't know what his name is. Anyway, that one is in the forge on this table in the vase. Wheel of Water is also in the forge. It's to the left of the giant flame. Where the serpent snared the eagle is in the cliff ruins to the left of the giant cage. Steps of Flesh and Bone is next to the Shrine of Caron. Where the mighty Titan points is to the left of the Titan wall by in Python Pass. Golden Taurus is in front of the Gaia Shrine at the Spartan Monument. Beneath the watchful gaze of Zeus is in front of the perk on the floor. Bark of gold is to the right of the boat in the Stoa of Athenians. Where sorrow washes over is to the left of the Odin perk in the River of Sorrow. So when you found at least one of them, let's start with Gaia. Grab a dormant hand and come to the shrine in the Spartan Monument. Place down the hand on the shrine and a lockdown will start locking you in the tiny circle on the ground. Your goal is to survive and primarily kill the zombies that have a kind of of greenish glow. When the lockdown ends, you can then pick up the Hand of Gaia. To upgrade it, you need to find three plants hidden around the map. There is one in the Temple Terrace, the intersection of treasuries to the left of the DMR wall by, and finally, in the Stoa of Athenians right before going into the intersection of treasuries. When you find all three of the plants, there will be three glowing red crystals within them that you need to destroy by shooting them with the Hand of Gaia. A seedling, a seedling will then 
sprout out of the ground and you need to pick it up and bring it all the way back to the shrine and place it there. While holding a seedling, you absolutely cannot switch weapons or sprint as you will fail in doing so. When all three seedlings have been placed, a portal will spawn in front of the shrine for you to go through and you'll be teleported to an area outside the map where you will have to complete a lockdown. You'll have infinite ammo during this and you can kill everything without having to worry about flipping the round. The hand will also be upgraded here and this is basically just a testing site and this will be the same for all of the upgrades. When the lockdown is finished, you'll be teleported back to the shrine and automatically be holding the upgraded hand of Gaia. So go ahead and place the hand back at the shrine before looking for your next dormant hand. Because I think if you're still holding it, it won't like give you a quote when you go to the Oracle. So I don't know, test it out if you want to, but put the hand back. The next one we're gonna focus on is the hand of Oranos. The shrine is located in front of Pack-a-Punch and repeat the same thing by placing a dormant hand on the shrine and complete the lockdown lockdown that locks you in the little circle on the ground. When the lockdown is over, pick up the hand of Oranos and you now need to go find three giant arrow tails around the underworld. The first one is to the left of Pack-a-Punch. The second one is in the Python Pass right next to the Shrine of Corone. And the final one can be found in the cliff ruins behind this mystery box location. When you find all three of the tails, you need to line up a zombie in between you and the tail and kill the zombie with the hand. What should happen is the body of the zombie will bounce off the tail in a glowing blue flat Feather, feather, feather will come off of it. You need to shoot the feather two times while it's in the air with the hand. While it is floating, after that second shot, it will just go back to the shrine. And you need to do this three times for all three of the tails. When the third feather reaches the altar, once again, a portal will appear. Just go through it and complete the lockdown. And when you come back, you'll have the upgraded hand of Oranos. Just place it back down at the shrine so we can work on the last two hands. Oh, actually, you know what? Before we move on, let me explain this a little better because I'm sure the way I explained it didn't work out so well. So you, when you kill the zombie to get it to hit the tail of the, the arrow, it's not gonna work first try believe me because I struggled too you have to be like kind of crouching underneath the zombie and like aiming upwards to get it to like fly in the direction you want it to go otherwise it's just gonna like go off into nothingness but I wanted to clear that up a little bit so let's move on to get the hand of Hamera go find another dormant hand and bring it to the shrine at the monument of Cr Craterus what's up with these Greek names why are they so hard to pronounce Crateris Whatever, do the lockdown, and when it ends, you'll need to pick up the hand of Himera and find three different reflective surfaces around the map. The first one is at the Temple Terrace on this pillar to the left. The second one is at the Gymnasium Bathhouse. It'll be on this pillar looking at the temple. And the final one is at the upper road on this archway. You need to shoot all three of these to move them and angle them so that way the shiniest side of the surface is facing you or basically looking slightly downward. When they are correctly angled, shoot them with the hand of Hamera and a ball of light will bounce off of the surface and some crystals, eventually landing in a cup of sorts. You need to run to this cup and melee it with the hand and now the ball of light will be on the back of it. You have about 15 seconds to run all the way back to the shrine with this ball of light. When you get there, melee the shrine and the light will now be transferred over to the shrine. Again, you need to do this a total of three times. But just fair warning, part of the reason why I had you bring stamina up was because the light at the bathhouse is pretty far and it's a tight squeeze to get it if you don't have stamina up. When you do get all three of the balls of light, just rinse and repeat going through the portal and surviving the lockdown. When you come back from the lockdown, you should have the upgraded hand and just put it back so you can do the final hand. The hand of Corone is probably gonna be the longest one to complete, but once more, go find a dormant hand and bring it to the shrine of Corone, start the lockdown and complete it. When it's over, head to the River of Sorrow and get kills inside the water until it turns blood red and gives you the option to drink it. But hold on, wait a minute, before you do, make sure that you have one zombie left because when you drink from the water, your vision will turn red and when you get hit, health regeneration will be turned off until you complete this next part. Now you need to go find three coins hidden around the underworld. I will not be showing you the locations, but you can see some of them as I explain this. 
While you're in this red vision, the coins will be able to be seen through the map and they will glow bright yellowish orange and there will be decoy coins, but the real coins will sound like this. The fake ones will also say false obol, while the real ones say obtain obol. When you find all three of the coins, then go back to the shrine and jump through the portal to do your last lockdown. When it's over, you'll come back and have the upgraded hand of Corone. You don't need to put this one away because it will be used for step three, plus you're all done with the hands. Now we can finally move on to step two, and to start, you need to have the eternal flame in spawn lit with a blue flame. In order to do this though, you need to do trials or challenges, whatever you wanna call them. To start these, you can either come to this bowl of jewelry in front of the oracle or this bowl of jewelry in the forge. These trials cost points to activate, but the amount of points will scale up depending on how high of a round you're on. And in co-op, the trials are for everyone. So when one starts, everyone will see the same one. The rewards you get don't really matter as much. What matters is the rarity that is seen. No matter how many people are in your game, everyone should probably focus on getting both a legendary and epic rarity. It doesn't exactly have to be that way, but for simplicity's sake, we'll keep it like that. These rarities act as a point system. Common is 0.5 points, rare is two points, legendary is four points, and epic is six points. In solo, you only need nine points to light the eternal flame blue, but for every person extra in your game, add another nine points. So two people is 18, three people is 27 points, and four people is 36 points. That's why I'm keeping it simple and saying just tell everyone in your game to get both a legendary and epic rarity for their rewards. Also, these trials aren't hard and they're pretty self-explanatory when you see them pop up on screen, but when the flame is ready to be lit, everyone in the game has to pick up their reward before it actually does turn blue. Here is the point where everyone is going to be super relieved. You can do this at any point after interacting with the Sentinel Artifact. So basically, while you're doing everything else in the map up to this point, you can be gaining progress on the Eternal Flame. When you do have the Eternal Flame, go buy a full shield and then melee the flame with the shield for the blue fire to transfer onto your spear. Now, without putting your shield away, you need to melee three oil slicks around the map. And also, as a side note, you need to start with a full shield because while the fire is on the shield, it will continuously take damage. The three oil slicks are in the upper road on this rock next to the bridge, on this wall at the intersection of treasuries, and on this wall at the Spartan Monument. All three of the slicks will light on fire and then disappear. And at this point, you can move on to step three. For step three, you need the Hand of Corone. So if you don't have it, go get it and make your way to the Spartan Monument in between these sets of statues. Fire a charged shot at the ground and stand inside of it. Your vision will get slightly blurry and turn black and white. When this happens, you will need to destroy, you will need to destroy four statues with the Hand of Corone that have glowing blue eyes but there will only be one statue that has these eyes at a time. And if you don't see the statue in time, the eyes will move to a different statue. If you're too slow to get all four of them by the time your charge shot runs out, then you'll be able to shoot another one at the ground and finish the job. Remember, Belle, we got a job to do. When you've done that, at this point, you're on to step four. Around the map, there's gonna be three cracks in the wall that you need to shoot to bust them open, revealing two different cogs. One of them will be stationary and the second one will be moving. Your goal is to get the moving cog to stop while touching the stationary cog. To do this, you'll need to throw a spear from the shield at it. And this may take a couple of attempts to get, but you can use Winner's Whale to hold a zombie and then just keep trying. If you happen to run out of spears on the shield, get it to break and just buy a new one. The three locations are on this wall at the intersection of treasuries, this wall on the opposite side of the intersection of treasuries, and this one might be the hardest one to get, but finally, on this wall at the Spartan Monument. Also, real quickly, if you miss the moving cog, then it can take anywhere from 
5 to 15 seconds to reappear, so keep an eye on it and try not to miss it. Now, you have to go to the Stoa of Athenians area of the map, and these three statues will be moving. The goal is to get them to stop moving while they're all facing the center of the circle. To do this, you have to throw a spear at this giant cog inside this building, and to make it a little bit easier, don't throw the spear until the statue closest to you is facing the right, and it should work. I'll even play it for you a little bit slower so that way you can see what's happening. When they're all facing the center and are stopped, you can then move on to step 5. To start on step 5, go pick up the Hand of Gaia and head over to the Offering of the Adelids section of the map. On this wall in the back left, you will see a small jumble of tree roots. I'm going to stop there and tell you to watch the video and pay attention, because if you fail, you'll need to flip the round and do this again. I will show you this twice, so don't panic. You need to shoot the hand of Gaia at the tree roots to get it to disappear. Now if you look to the right and you stand generally where I'm standing here and you aim your crosshairs here and shoot the hand again, the projectile that comes out should split and hit two different jumbles of roots. If you don't see it, immediately shoot a second follow-up shot to get it to actually split into two shots. Even if that first shot doesn't split and you shoot that second one right after, that one should split as long as you're doing everything that you see me doing here. Because let's say it doesn't split even after that second shot, then you're just gonna fail and you're gonna have to restart again. Now stand here relatively and you need to do the exact same thing aiming right here and this time the shot should break into three pieces and if it doesn't break off, shoot an immediate follow-up shot. So here it is now in one fluid movement for you to see. When you do that, a Giganese will spawn on the roof and you need to save him. Do not kill him. Bring him to the intersection of treasuries and on this red crystal, an Ankh will be stuck. You need to get him to do a concussive blast while facing the Ankh to get it unstuck. The easiest way to do this is to keep him at a slight distance and take off his helmet by shooting it. After some time, he should do the concussive blast and you can pick the Ankh up off the floor. At this point, go ahead and kill him. You don't need him anymore. He will drop a spear for you to pick up and you'll also need that here in a second. Head back over to the offering of the Adelids and place that spear here in this sundial. A little whimsical beam of electricity will start connecting to the spear and it'll be positioned over three of these symbols lined up in a row. You now need to kill an electric catalyst zombie over top of the sundial. These electric catalysts will spawn pretty often, so don't worry about not seeing them. A slot will open when you kill one on the sundial, allowing you to see symbols moving, and there will be one symbol that is blue. When you see the blue symbol in the open slot, you need to count at the pace it's moving all the way up until it reaches the electric line and interact with the sundial to get that blue symbol to stop moving on the electric line. But you need to interact with the sundial as it's moving from its previous position to the electric line, so that way it will stop on the line and the slot will open showing you the symbol again. Now I know that's a little complicated, so I'll let you see what I mean now. Basically, it's like music. Every time the symbols move, you're counting on beat or on tempo with the blue symbol to get it to stop where it needs to. After doing that with the outer circle, you'll need to do it two more times, but each time you do, to start it, you'll need to kill another electric catalyst on the sundial, and the speed at which the symbols rotate will get faster. If you fail, I'm not 100% sure if you have to completely restart, or if you just restart from the symbol you failed on. Also lastly, for this part of the step, to protect yourself, I would just say throw down a Pegasus Strike, or if you don't have them, just use Wraith Fires. At this point, go grab the Hand of Himera and head over to the raw perk statue. Place the Ankh in his right hand and give him the Hand of Himera in his left. He will shoot a light beam at the wall in front of him and your goal is to prevent zombies and skeletons from blocking the beam. But, and this is a fat ass butt with a PH, 
this is hard as fuck to do in solo, but there is a workaround, basically an oversight from the developers, you can call it. As soon as you give Ra the hand of Himera, do not kill anything and let this part fail. Still, at this point, don't kill anything and go back to the hand of Himera and pick it up. Then give it back to Ra. As soon as you give him the hand, you need to run as fast as you can to the area where you built the shield and train all those skeletons and zombies there for one full minute. When that minute is over, go to the wall where Ra was shooting the hand and his scepter will be inside. Pick it up and return it to Ra. I guess I should also mention that when he's done with the hand of Himera, it will automatically return back to the shrine. Even if you followed everything I told you to do for the workaround and it still fails, then just keep doing it until it succeeds because you're probably not gonna get it on the first try unless you're just him. Okay, so now we're on step six and this step is super easy. Go ahead and grab one of the upgraded hands that you want to use for this, but I recommend the hand of Himera because it's just better. Go into the amphitheater and you'll see a glowing light on the ground. The light's color will be dependent on the hand you're using. Stand in it and you'll see another one appear shortly. You need to go stand in that light now and one of two things is gonna happen. Zombies are either gonna spawn on the ground or they're gonna spawn up in the stands. If the zombies spawn on the ground, you need to kill them with charge shots. If they spawn in the stands, you need to kill them with single shots and you'll need to do this three times standing in three different lights. Then your screen will turn gray and you'll see the original light that you stood on before. Go ahead and stand on it and the same sequence will begin again, but this time you'll have four different lights. Then you'll have to go find that original light again and complete the sequence one more time, but this time it'll be five lights you'll end up needing to stand on. It basically goes in terms of phases. The first phase is gonna be three lights, the second phase is four lights, and then the third phase is five lights. But in between each phase, you need to go find that original smaller light that you stood on, is basically what I'm trying to say. If you're doing this step in co-op and your screen turns gray, even though you've maybe only stood on two lights, it just means that the game doesn't want you to have a light for that round or that specific phase, so just go ahead and stand on the original smaller light. When the step is completely over, you'll receive a bunch of little point power-ups and a max ammo, as well as your screen will flash white. Step 7 is going to start by going into the underworld, and you'll need to come to this door in the River of Sorrow and shoot the symbols on the door in this order that you're seeing now. If you're playing as either Bruno or Shaw, you'll be able to interact with the door and see a pretty cool cutscene. If you're not playing as either of them, them, you'll just bypass the cutscene in solo, and in co-op you won't see it, but all the zombies will now be on you. Just a side note, the cutscene will be from the perspective of whoever you're playing as. So Shaw's will look slightly different from Bruno's, but it'll still pretty much be the same. When it's over, come to this symbol just behind you and place down a Pegasus strike right on it. Pegasus will end up pulling a giant ballista out of the ground and you'll need to run and grab the hand of Oranos and use it on the ballista until it stops moving and automatically cocks back the bolt inside. Go back to the Eternal Flame and get the Eternal Flame on your shield spear and without putting it away, teleport back to the underworld using this portal in the Stoa of Athenians. I don't know why, but it has to be that portal. I tried going through a different one, and the next part just would not work for me, like at all. When you do get back, you need to turn on this trap in the Python Pass and run through it to get the flame on the spear to turn green. Run all the way back to the ballista and melee the arrow from the back to get it to fire at the head of the giant lady above Pack-a-Punch. When you've done that, you can start getting ready for the boss fight. This boss fight is pretty difficult. I'm gonna tell you everything that I brought in weapon-wise and even I struggled. The number one thing you need to do for 100% sure is hit the box until you get the homunculus because when you enter the boss fight, your Pegasus strike will be taken away from you. I brought in the hand of Corone because I really like that one, but you can use any hand you want to. And if you don't want the hand of Corone, I can also really highly recommend the hand of Oranos. For a secondary weapon, I use the Daemon 3XB, or whatever it's called, but basically this one that you're seeing now. This boss fight is the one boss fight where I do not recommend using the Helian Salvo because you'll be on three floating islands and the bosses move around a lot. Grab a new shield, perks, and anything else you need, but all of that should go without saying. But once you've done everything here, you are now ready to go into the boss fight. Go to the back of Pack-a-Punch and interact with this portal. It'll start a pretty cool cutscene taking you into 
the boss arena. Here's the deal. You have three different islands you can move to. This island you see me on now is basically Spawn Island, and the other two to your left and right don't really matter as much in the sense that they're really only there if you're being overrun, or at least that's how I view them. I pretty much only stay on the Spawn Island, but that's just me. When the cutscene does finish and you get on the Spawn Island and start the fight, Pegasus will now be your enemy and he'll be the first of two bosses. Pegasus will fly overhead and disappear. He will not come back until you kill a Giganese that spawns shortly after he disappears. So you have to kill that Giganese. In co-op, you have to go to every island and kill a Giganese before Pegasus reappears. When he does reappear, he will fly over different islands and his only attack is basically leaving a snail trail of electricity on the floor that is hard to cross. Your goal is to get him to fall onto an island and the most effective way to do this is to shoot single shots of a hand at him. When he does fall, he'll turn to this cracked orange look and you need to pull out your specialist weapon and absolutely fuck his day up with it. You'll know if you've done enough damage to him because the island to the left of spawn will go up in flames and you won't be able to go over there anymore. If you're on the island when it goes up in flames, then you'll instantly die. No if, ands, or buts. So keep an eye on the island to the left of spawn. If you haven't done enough damage to him, he'll get up and fly away, but in the process, everyone who is on the same island as him will take immense amounts of damage, so when he's not orange anymore, get off the island. I should also mention that if you don't one-phase Pegasus, Perseus in the center island will be constantly throwing fire at you, and this is both good and bad. He basically gives you a trade offer of standing in the fire to replenish your specialist super fast, but you also take damage, so don't stand in it for too long. When you do finally hurt Pegasus enough to get him to destroy the left island, you need to do it again until he destroys the island to the right. Just keep rinsing and repeating the same things that I've already gone over, and after the second go around, Perseus will take down his shield and kill Pegasus, and that is the point at which the second island will not be usable. So after that, only the spawn island will be left. Perseus is the second boss, and he has only two attacks. Aside from throwing fire at you, which actually kind of helps you, he will also look like he's going to throw his sword at you, and this is him teleporting to your island. His second attack only happens when he's on your island, and he basically throws fire around in a circle. Perseus is the same as Pegasus, except that you can only do damage to him when he is on your island, so keep that in mind. Keep shooting single shots of one of the hands, and he'll turn the same orange color eventually, now just pull out your specialist weapon and fuck him up. This may take two or three phases, but when you've done enough damage, he'll try to go back to his island and fail in doing so, literally just fucking dying at your feet. In his place, the Oracle Key will be there for you to pick up, and as soon as you do that, the ending cutscene will begin to play, and you'll receive the achievement Greek Tragedy. Before I go on to the actual ending outro to this video, I do want to mention for the boss fight also, if you're running out of ammo, on each of the islands before you completely kill Pegasus, and even afterwards on the spawn island, at random points throughout, when you deal like certain amounts of damage and all that, and you complete certain phases, you'll get carpenters to heal your shield and you'll get max ammos. But because of the way this boss fight is set up to be, that's why I had you bring in the licensed contractor and then the max ammo uh, elixirs. I just kind of wanted to point that out because while you're also in this boss fight, rounds will still continue to pass so you can continuously replenish those. I wanna thank everyone for watching this video. It's taken me a very long time to create it. Black Ops 4 as a whole, I would say is fun to do the Easter eggs if you have time, but explaining them is a completely different story and it's not that easy. So I appreciate all of your guys' patience with me. At the time of recording this, we're also at 420 subscribers, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's pretty huge, at least in my book. So I also wanna say thank you for that. We're officially done with the Easter egg guides for Black Ops 4, meaning that my next video will be the D-Machine Easter egg guide. So I hope you all look forward to that. I hope you all have a great day. Bye.